Hello there, and welcome to part 3 of our AADA 10 course uh, tutorial series. Uh, where, and this is going to be the last one, by the way. Uh, so here we are going to look into, um, once you have the geometry in Rhino, what do you do with it, right? How do you get uh, architectural drawings out of it, right? So we're going to take a look at uh, precisely that. You know, how to get architectural um, like plants, elevations, and so on from a three-dimensional model. Oh, and actually you don't see this, uh, cell CRV, delete. No curves yet, no curves yet. Uh, you didn't see that, All right? Um, so let's begin. So I assume by, uh, that by now uh, all of you have at least um, like a basic 3D model that you can use and that you can kind of start extracting the, uh, the drawings from. Um, and it's going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, the main tool that does it is called Make2D. Make2D, Make2Dimensional, right? So it basically just creates a drawing from any kind of 3D model that there is. There are, of course, um, rules on how you can use it and ways of how you can use that command, and I'll be covering it here with this, uh, uh, with this tutorial uh, today. So, first of all, let me go to layers and actually clean all of this up. Because as I was creating the geometry and I was thinking what to tell you and how to explain it, I, I kind of neglected the layers here, so I want to bring them back, and I want them to be quite, uh, quite clean, like the, the the structure of them to be quite quite clear and also quite clean. So here we have side drawing, um, uh, like main layer and sub layers being landscape contours, blah blah blah, right? So I will just hide that one, straight up like this, um, and. Basically, everything like the 2D information that we got at the start of our project is, at this point, quite unnecessary. If I need to, I will get some stuff from it, but for now, eh, we don't care. So that's that. Um, then we have our landscape geometry, which is great. We have tree geometry, that is great. I will create a new layer and call it landscape. And my tree geometry and landscape geometry will belong to that landscape layer. So what I'm doing is I'm just dragging the layers in it. So I have my uh, main layer here, okay? And then I will create a new layer, call it <coughs> pathways, pathways. And for that layer, I will select this uh, polysurface here, perhaps these steps, this rail here. It would make sense to kind of select this as well, but maybe not. Let me not select those. So that side is, will belong to the pathways layer, like so, and also this side. So I'll just select the two retaining wall, walls, change them to pathways layer, and let me just hide the landscape layer and select all of these bricks and change them to pathways there. Great, so now I can hide that as well. Now we have our walls layer, which I believe is almost um, correct. I still want these kind of small retaining walls to be in that layer as well, as well as these columns here. I will just regard them as walls. Uh, so I'll just change object layer for, for those elements and then I'll hide the walls layer. So what we're left with is the floor plate, great. And we have our roof, right? So I will just create a new layer and call it roof. I uh, select all of the, you know, floaty bits and just change object layer, change them to be in the roof layer. Right, so now let's create a main layer for all of this and I'll call it uh, pavilion and let me just give it the walls layer the la uh, no, the landscape layer should be separate so, but the pathways goes into pavilion the roof goes into pavilion floor plate goes into pavilion great 
So we have that. So now I can hide, unhide, make sure that all of these are unhidden, unhide the landscape. Yeah, that's good. So now what about the tools that we don't need or layers that we don't need? I will um, enable the helper layer as my active one. And for the, for instance, the step curves, I don't need them anymore. I will just delete that layer, the step curves layer. Same thing with layer zero. I don't need it, I, ju I just delete it, right? In terms of default layer, eh, let's just delete that one as well, just to keep everything clean, right? Great, so now everything is kind of cleaned up and I can access my pavilion, my landscape layers or my side drawing layers. Everything is in order. It's not, you know, it's kind of a boring thing to do, uh, but it is something that needs to be done. And, you know, it's, it's, it's nice when you have everything structured. So, okay, let's talk about make 2D, right? Um, if I have an object, a box, right? And I am looking at it from an angle like that. Right. And I want to make 2D the box. Actually, let me just do something with it. Uh, solid points on. Um, like that. So that it just has some sort of a interest, right? So I select the box and I type in make 2D. So what, would, uh, what it will do is it will take the view as perspective, right? So it's, it's going to make a projection of this. It's going and it's going to ask you a bunch of stuff, right? What, what kind of a drawing would you like to make? So let me go through the options. So here under view, um, the current view should be the, the active one by default. So you don't really change it. Uh, projection type view should always be, you know, it should always be set to view. And I also believe it's the default one, so you don't change it as well. But what you can change is the options, like stuff in the options. So under object properties, you can either uh, like separate the, the, the properties of the objects, for instance, the line color, line thickness, um, line type, and so on, according to the original objects, output layers, or um, like the, the, the maintaining the source layer. So it's, it's basically uh, the helper uh, layer. Once you create the curves from geometry that is located in the helper layer, it would, that, 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 the, that drawing would still be created in the helper layer. If you say, um, by output layers, it would create its own. So it would say, you know, this is a separate layer for the dashed line, this is a separate layer for a continuous line, and so on. Really hard to explain it with words without actually showing. So let me just hit OK real fast and just show you. See how, so I hit OK, and we have our drawing there. In the top view, you will actually see its correct view, like that. And it did make a little bit of a mistake there, but that's fine. Um, and here you can see plan one has been created uh, with visible sublayer in it and curves, uh, curves sublayer in the visible layer. Right? That's how it works. If I were to go back, let me. So I've deleted the curves and let me delete the, that layer sequence. Let me do that again with this box, make 2D, and this time let me choose maintain source layers and hit OK. See how um, now all of the curves are not located in the curves layer, but rather they are located in the helper layer, right? Because this object was located in the helper layer. So that's what it means, right? It will just create more information. Um, sometimes useful, sometimes not so useful. Right, so I just undo it. Uh, make 2D, let's go back to make 2D. So that's object properties. Usually I just use output layers. I don't really, especially for uh, small stuff like this. Then we have tan uh, what kind of lines should it create? Uh, we're saying that it should create tangent edges. 
uh, hidden line, scene silhouette. So let me enable all three of these just to show you uh, what they do. Tangent, hidden lines, scene silhouette. And actually, let me give layer name. Uh, so here I will just name my make 2D drawing, right? And I'll make, uh, name it uh, weird box. Hit OK. Buck. You can see that now a, a big layer, like the main layer, is called weird box, and it has two sub layers, visible and hidden. The visible layer has scene silhouette and curves sub layers, while the hidden layer just has curves. Let me go to the top view, kind of move this to the correct position, and just explain you or, or show you what, what they are, right? So let's start with by hiding the hidden layer, right? We don't, we don't care about that one. And it is making mistakes. Um, so be warned, you will need to kind of look at it here and also look at it in the perspective view and imagine what, you know, where are the lines that are missing. And here I would say there's probably this line needs to be extended until the end or it can be deleted, one of, one of those. Either way. We have uh, two visible sublayers. We have scene silhouette and curves. Let me change the color of scene silhouette to red so that you can see better. So scene silhouette uh, creates, uh, well, except here for some reason, but it should also have done this, like that. It creates a perimeter curve around your object. Meaning that you can make that uh, like perimeter of your object when you make 2D, you can make it thicker if you need to. It's nice. Uh, so since let I sometimes use it. It's it's sometimes nice to just get that perimeter around your object. In this case, let me just hide it. And here we have the curves layer. So curves layer is basically just all the stuff that you can see, right? Everything, all of the lines that you can see in your model. Easy. Um, and then we have the hidden layer. So hidden layer is all of the lines that you can't see in your model, right? All of the hidden lines below your model. And here this line is super awkward, but yeah, I guess, I guess it is what it is, right? So it kind of continues on here, which doesn't really make any sense, but it is, yeah, I mean, this is accurate. It's just super awkward uh, in, in the way it's drawn. So it's, it is generated. Keep in mind that Make2D will make mistakes and you will need to clean them up and fix them. And I'll show you the, all of the mistakes that it's going to make once we start using Make2D on the actual pavilion, right? So in terms of this box, let me just delete all of this and let me delete the, the layer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go back to perspective view and let's see what, what else we can do with this box. Make 2D. Uh, there's the viewport rectangle option. Never have this on. This is ugly. Uh, group output option. Sure. Uh, if you want all of the curves to be grouped, then you can do it, but usually I never do this. And register with previous. I have no idea what this does, so I don't use it. And in this case, um, Let's actually cancel that, delete the box and actually start working on the pavilion itself because we don't want to spend too much time doing nothing. So in terms of working on the pavilion itself, uh, where do we begin, right? Do we begin by, uh, we need to do a site plan, a ground floor plan, so a single plan, uh, a section and then axo, axonometry. So do we begin with, let's begin with a site plan. I think that's going to be easiest because that one will not need, we will not need to do any make to, uh, sorry, we won't need to do any cutting for it. So let's go to top view, of course, because that's the direction from which we are going to make 2D, this object, right? Select it, select it all, 
and type in make to D. Uh, and in this case, uh, we definitely don't want to see neither hidden lines nor scene silhouette. Uh, the reason why we don't want to see hidden lines because we don't in the side plan we don't show them. Um, it's unnecessary. And for scene silhouette, uh, all we would get is this outer rectangle. So that makes no sense to have. Tangent edges, sure, we can keep them. They kind of show the curvature of curved stuff. So might as well keep them. Everything else is fine. Uh, layer name, I'll just call it site plan. Hit OK. And just wait for it to uh, do the calculation. There we go. So it's done. I will just move the drawing to the side a bit so that it's not in the way. Okay, what's missing? Right? If I zoom in here, you can see you know that these are all messed up, but that's fine. Here something is messed up. What is that actually? There's nothing here. Why is this messing up? Anyway here also. So there are things that are messing up and that are not that clean, right? And that we need to fix. But what's the main thing that's missing? I'll, I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with landscape. Think. Don't wait for me, just think. I feel like that, that uh, cartoon, Dora the Explorer, right? Where which path would you like to take? Yes, the right one. Anyway, uh, so the ISO curves, the contour lines of the landscape are missing, right? Because uh, it can't get you the contour lines from, uh, you know, a 3D model. Uh, they don't exist. Uh, you can kind of see it in the Arctic view. You know, it's just, you know, from top, it just looks like a rectangle with some shadows on it. So we need to recreate the contour lines. And actually, this is quite nice because you can do a pretty fun job of it, right? So let me show you how to create contour lines or recreate contour lines. We have this box, right, uh, for our landscape. And I will take this box and I will type in contour. So I'll, I'll be contouring this box, right? And I'll contour it from bottom so I'm using this edge to describe direction, right? So I'm contouring the box from bottom upwards, like that. And here I need to specify the distance between contours. And here I have specified 0 0.25, which I think is fine. So every 25 centimeters we have a contour, a contour line. It's very dense, and uh, you know this this kind of contouring is very dense. Usually you have 0 0.5 meters between contours. But here, you know, we don't care. So I just hit enter and it does a bunch of contours through it, right? Let me now move this to the side, like so. Like move all of these contours to the side. And you can see that these are still three-dimensional. I don't need them to be three-dimensional. Actually, I don't want them to be three-dimensional. So what we're going to do is we will take them and I, uh, we will type in project to C plane, squish them down, right? Project to C plane, enter, delete input objects, yes. So I'm, I want to get rid of the three dimensional ones and I only want to keep the uh, flat ones uh, that are on the ground. Delete input objects, yes. Then we have a two dimensional drawing. Uh, let me, uh, let's select it. Under site plan, visible, uh, I will create a new layer and I will call it uh, cur uh, ISO curves, I guess. ISO curves, like that. Or, or landscape contours. Uh, we can go for contours. That's, that's fine as well. I'll drag it into visible just so that it's more clean. And I'll give it a color of, uh, like, let's go for dark gray. And I'll change all of these uh, contour lines to the contours layer. Change. There we go. So we have that working. We can now go to the top view, select this, M, short for move, uh, and move it from its bottom left corner to the bottom left corner of the landscape Make2D. 
see that it fits. There we go. So that works. That worked out. Now there is uh, going to be some cleaning up to do, of course. Uh, but most of the cleaning up, so this is fine. All of this, this area is fine. This is okay. We will need to get rid of these circles here. So I'm going to now start cleaning everything up a bit by bit, right? Uh, so that looks fine now. We need to fix that, but that's going to be in just a bit. That also needs fixing uh, inner circles here. So wherever you have circles for trees, it's fine to have them um, wherever you have circles for trees. It's fine to have them um, to have the contour lines b b below them to just you know kind of not trim away. For instance, this contour line with this circle, that's fine. Uh, but when you um, have the geometry of a building or platform. Uh, and you see contour lines below it, then it's weird. Then you need to trim it off, right? So for instance, I will select this uh, curve right here, not this curve, rather this curve. It's a little bit um, kind of dirty, but we will do it either way. Type in trim, get rid of that. Nope, doesn't trim. We will make it trim. Uh, actually, one trick that I do is I select everything, type in trim. And then I just trim off everything that I don't need. So for instance, here, see, trims off quite quite cleanly here. Um, and I'll just go around and make sure that everything that I... Why are you not trimming? There we go. Everything that I want to be clean should be clean. So trimming usually takes... Um, how long? I would say... Like cleaning up in, in general, uh, in general takes around half of, of the project's time, right? So half of the time you are modeling the project and half of the time you're cleaning it up. So we have that. Uh, whoa, don't need that. Let me explode that. Get rid of that. There we go. Don't need that. Need to explode that though. So there's a lot of exploding and um, deleting. We'll, uh, a lot of that is going to happen. So this is a, a little bit cleaner. That is unnecessary. This is fine now. This connects kind of nicely. This for some reason intersects. So let me just clean it up a bit. Now it looks fine. Actually, we could be a little bit more um, precise about it and just delete all of this. Like that. Maybe that's that's a little bit cleaner, I think. Same thing here. Um, let's just select that, explode, and then delete. Delete. Uh, this will need to be trimmed because I can't explode it. So trim like that. That gets trimmed away. This gets deleted. And now we just use select all of this, trim. And let's see, uh, so that, 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 go away, go away, go away, go away. No, no, no. Okay. And everything else seems to be kind of clean, clean. That is fine. That's fine. Uh, these areas right here, they are too small for, for you to see when you print it out. So this is like way too close. So we will not be uh, cleaning up those small areas. All of these are double lines, so I'll need to be mindful of that uh, when I'm choosing my line thickness. Um, so that is fine, that looks okay. So this whole area is actually okay. And this whole area is not okay. And this is simply because of the contour lines that are going through the staircase lines as well. Uh, so let me just select that and that. I think that's going to be enough. Use trim and just get rid of the contour lines in between these two curves. Like that, because they are blocked by, by the staircase, right? So it makes no sense that uh, we can see them. Technically, we should be able to see that one, but I'm just choosing to, to hide it so that it's a little bit visually better. 
All right. Uh, other than that, this is the pathway, so this is fine uh, to have it like that. Um, right, let's fix the trees and uh, we will move on to the next one. So uh, I call this the first pass of cleaning, right? I just kind of clean up the main, main, main bad things that, you know, no architect should, should have in their projects. Um, I will, for, for the tree trunks, I will change this to curves layer and maybe, maybe we should separate our curves layer to three la uh, layer. For now, I'll just draw in the curves layer and I'll make a cross. So I'll make a, like a plus sign. Um, let's say 0 0.5. Mm, that's a little bit. Let's go for a meter. And then take that one, uh, holding down the Alt key, rotate it by 90 degrees. Holding down Alt key. So that means it makes a copy, right? So we have now a cross here. And then I will just, uh, I can just kind of move the cross here and type in copy and start adding the cross to the center. Uh, so snapping it to the center of these trees. Uh, for that, I will turn off ortho. I will turn at, uh, turn off every other snap except for center snap, and then I'll just go to town, like snapping to every center of every tree. That, 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 that was faster than I expected. Now I don't need the cross anymore, so I'll just delete it. So this is like the where, where the tree is located, right? Important information. All right, that's it with the site plan. Let's do uh, let's do ground floor plan. That's going to be also quite easy to do. So I will for ground floor plan. We actually need to make a section right through the building because that's what the ground floor plan is. It's it's a section cut at uh, 1.1 meters. Well, it depends, uh, but let's say 1.1 meters above the ground plane, right? And in this case, the ground plane is going to be our floor right here. So 1.1 meters above the floor. Um, how do you cut it? Well, you could kind of create a box, right? And do Boolean difference with the box and then make 2D. But that's a little bit, um, let's say, unsustainable. If, if yeah, that is a correct word term to, to use in this case. Um, also unreversible. So instead what we use is we use a command that's called clipping plane. Clipping plane, created. So you create it like a rectangle. And from here on out, this is going to be your uh, rectangle with which you clip by, well, you cut by moving it, right? Up and down and, well, actually, if I move it left to right, it does nothing, but if I rotate it though, cool, huh? All right, so that means that, uh, by the way, uh, please don't rotate it by like one degree <laughs> and, and you won't, wouldn't be able to see that it's rotated, but everything would start looking funky. So now let me take this clipping plane, move vertical, M, enter, V, enter, move, vertical, right? So M is short for move, V is short for vertical. So I hit, I select the shape, I hit M, enter, and then V, enter, right? To move it vertically. Uh, I will select, uh, I'll, I'll enable end snapping to be on, and I'll just select one of the corners of my clipping plane, like so. And also I'll select one of the points on the top plane, plate of this, um, uh, like the top surface, like that. So now my, uh, my clipping plane is located right at the top of the surface. And now let me just move it up by 1.1 meters, like this. That's it, right? So now I have it, uh, have the correct height of, of the clipping. Then all I need to do is just go to the top view, right? And, and make 2D. But notice how when I go to the top view, 
the clipping plane is not cutting, right? So I still see the, the roof, even though in perspective view, the roof is gone because it's being cut by the clipping plane. In the top view, it's still here. And also actually in the front view, it's still here. You know, th this guy doesn't do anything. And in the right view as well, it's still here. So what's up with that? Well, the problem with it is that the clipping plane itself only cuts in the view in which it was created. That's easy to fix, by the way. So you just select your clipping plane. You go to properties here, properties or object properties. Uh, you go to uh, and, and here, as long as you have clipping plane selected, that's important to have it selected. Um, you will have clipping plane option, right? There's this icon right here. So this is like custom, custom properties for that particular object type, which is a clipping plane. Click on that. And basically here, it's, it's very, you know, intuitive. It's clipping in the perspective view. You want it to clip in the, the front, top and right views as well, right? So as I'm adding the tick marks, you can see that it starts cutting in every view. That's it. That's it. Okay, so let's go back now to top view. And let's actually move the clipping plane away from the drawing so that I don't accidentally make you know lines from the clipping plane, make 2D lines from the clipping plane. And let us just select all of this and type in make 2d make 2d right so that it will only make 2d stuff that you have selected by the way that's important okay layer name that's going to be ground nope that's not how you write ground Gr gr that's not how you write ground ground floor plan and I want to show tangent edges, sure. Uh, hidden lines, not really. Scene silhouette, no. Uh, clipping plane intersections, I will explain what it is, but yes, definitely. You want to show clipping plane intersections. I will explain it once we generate it though. Uh, viewport rectangle, no. Group output, no. Register with previous, no. Okay. So, and give it the name. Hit OK. Let's go to layers. Let's just wait for it to kind of do its magic. There we go. Just move it to, to the side here. This is our ground floor plan. So how do we um, how do we add stuff to it? Well, um, because we do need to add stuff to it. <laughs> let's be honest, it's a little bit empty. So first of all, let's remove stuff from it, right? So back to the trees. Really need to clean those trees. Like that, that. It's a little bit too much. Like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually fun. Okay, so we have that. All right, we have that done. Now we need uh, axes for the trees. So I will just select all of the axes. And I know that, you know, the landscape is... Um, the rectangle of the landscape is the correct size uh, between the drawings, right? Is this sorry? It's not correct. It is correct, but it's uh, more importantly the same size, it's the same proportion between the drawings, meaning that I can use it as a reference. Uh, what I mean by that is when I have all of these things, all of these pluses selected, plus signs selected, I can take them and I type in. I, I can type in copy, and I can copy from bottom left corner of one drawing to bottom left corner of the other drawing. Right. So these guys get copied over. That's it. They are still in the uh, in the wrong layer. So let me just hide the curves, tangents, and and so on. Like let me hide these three layers of the ground floor plan, main layer, 
select all of the plus signs and just change them to uh, curves layer, transfer them to curves layer. So now everything is kind of correct. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to explain what clipping plane intersections means. So let me change them to red color so that it's easier for you to see. And here you will notice that the trees are red, the walls are red, well, kind of red, They're, the walls are red, but the staircase and so on is, are not, right? Why? Well, the reason why is because if we look at the top view, we are cutting through the walls, right? Or can I change this to, uh, can I change this to Arctic view? Yeah, there we go. This is much better to show you. We are cutting through the walls and we are cutting through the trees, right? But we are not cutting through the pathway. So clipping plane intersections, those lines there, let's go, go back to the shaded view, are showing stuff that we are cutting through, are like creating these outlines around stuff that we're cutting through. So in terms of trees, that's weird. You know, uh, you should never, you know, show a tree, a section of a tree, unless you really know what you're doing with your graphics. So here I am just going to select all of the trees and I'll just uh, change it to curves layer, right? But for clipping plane intersections layer, uh, notice how I make it red so that I really see what's, what's being clipped. Uh, for clipping planes intersections layer, I will just uh, kind of clean it up, you know, kind of clean up the, the, the curves. So I will make sure that there are no curves in the way and that everything is kind of connecting properly like that. This seems fine. This is okay. This looks good. Oh, a little bit too much. Delete that. There is like this line here, but yeah, that, that one is, is unnecessary to delete. Um, so this is just got cleaned up just a tiny bit, right? Uh, just so that I can uh, I can sleep better. Uh, actually, like that. It should be like that, um, and that is good. So uh, we clean up the section. Right. And now let's add information, you know, that's missing. So we need to add information that's uh, the, the ISO curves, right? Uh, or contour lines, rather, uh, of the landscape. So let me just right click on the contours uh, layer here and choose select sublayer objects. So I select all of the contour lines and I will copy, copy them again from bottom left corner to bottom left corner of this drawing. From one drawing to the other. Hit escape a bunch of times and you have your contour lines here, right? Easy. Um, in terms of how to, uh, how to clean them, you don't need to because you already cleaned them here, right? There is no need to clean them again because they're already clean. Um, but they do need to be in the correct layer, right? So ground floor plan visible doesn't have contours layer. So let me really quickly create one. Contours. And let me uh, do one trick that I really like doing. It's right clicking on the old contours layer, select objects. Right, so I have both of these selected. And then I, uh, the ones on the right, I want to move to the new contours layer. While the ones on the left should stay, you know, uh, should stay in the old one. So I will just simply unselect the ones that are on the left, holding down the control key and dragging, right? I unselect them. And now I only have these selected. And I just right click, change object layer. That's it. I can even make this blue so that you can see that these are now separate. All right. So we have that done. Um, one more thing before we continue on to the section and uh, uh, axonometry. So here I want the, I do have a lot of information like detailing around the ceiling, the roof of my building. So I want to transfer that information here. How do I do that? Well, that's uh, pretty straightforward. I just take all of these curves 
make sure that you're taking all of them. Ah, no, 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 not like that. Control Z. I select all of these curves like that. Don't miss that one. For some reason that one didn't get selected. That. Let's select that. Okay, that's good. I don't know why it sometimes turns on uh, control points when I have a lot of curves selected, but that's just what uh, Rhino likes doing, I guess. Um, so I'm basically just selecting all of the detailing at the top of my building, right? And I will take that detailing, I will create a new layer of that detailing for that detailing, rather. I'll create a new layer and I'll call it um, above the cut. Above the cut, stuff that is above the cut in this plan view, right? I will select my, rec uh, for instance, I will select this line here because I need a reference line. Basically, I just need this point, right? Uh, so I'll select one of the lines. I will select the top. Um, and then I will just copy. And I will copy it, uh, copy it somewhere close by, right? So you can see, and hit escape a bunch of times. So what you can see here is I have a line, and I know that this is the bottom left corner that I constantly used to copy from one place to the other into the correct position. And then I have my detail here, like my detail lines here. So let me just select all of them and change them to the layer called above the cut, right? And let's make that layer uh, green. Yeah, we're not using green, so let's make it green, right? Then I can select all of them, M, short for move, enter. So M, enter, from this endpoint here, let's say from the bottom left corner to the bottom left corner, as per usual, right? We move it. Okay. Um, now there's a little bit of cleaning up to do, but uh, that, that should be quite, uh, quite easy. Mm. Why are these a little bit offset though? Um, select sublayer objects. Let's just make sure that these are not being offset in a weird way. They indeed are being offset in a weird way. So now I need to find where to snap them and i think i just did it's like that right so this snaps quite well that one is fine this one snaps quite well as well that one snaps fine okay uh so it was a little bit off center i don't know why that happened but it did happen and i cleaned it all right um, so that is how it looks like right now, and we will be fixing a few more things about it in, uh, in the near future. future, but for now I will leave it be, right? This is, um, let's call it, this is clean enough, right? So now, or actually what is, oh, that's, that's actually fine. So now let's make a section. So I'll go back to perspective view, and I'll... Uh, rotate my clipping plane 90 degrees. So if you hold down the shift key or if you turn on the ortho and you rotate your, you know, your geometry, it will rotate it every 90 degrees, very useful. And then I can just kind of move it and make a, make a section. The problem is that my uh, building is um, angled, right? It's, an, it's at an angle. So if I move my clipping plane like so, it's a weird cut. Right? The cut doesn't make sense. So what I need to do is I need to um, rotate this clipping plane so that it's aligned with some sort of a wall or something like that. How do I do that? Well, the first thing that I need to do is I need to go to properties of this clipping plane and make sure that it, that clipping plane is not cutting in the perspective view because uh, it, it's weird to try and rotate it and it's cutting the stuff and you're trying to orient it on the geometry and it's cutting the geometry at the same time as you're trying to orient it, it becomes this whole hassle thing. So instead, 
no cutting involved and now I can just freely move the clipping plane and it's not going to affect the geometry for now. Let me scale it down a bit because it's a little bit too a little bit too big. It's just visual preference. It's actually the size of it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't influence anything. Okay, so now I will move the clipping plane from its top left corner point to, let's say, um, this corner point right here. This end corner point right here. And then I will try to rotate the clipping plane so that it's aligned with this surface, this edge surface right here. Not the top surface, the side surface, the this surface right here. I'll try to rotate the clipping plane. So how do we do that? Well, if I just take the gumball and rotate it, it's a lot of guessing in the world, right? Of me trying to rotate it properly. So instead we will use rotate. Rotate tool. I believe it's R, enter, I don't know. I just type in rotate, enter. It will ask you for center of rotation, so the point around which we are rotating. So that's going to be the same point to which we moved, right? So we're rotating around that, uh, that point. Then it's going to ask you for either immediately give, giving it an angle, which we don't know, or giving it first reference point. We do have a first reference point, and it's the opposite corner, which is here, right? This uh, of the clipping plane. So, so it's the opposite corner of the clipping plane. So it's this guy, right? So we click on it, and now you can see as I drag my mouse, I can just place it, you know, rotate it any way I want. But I don't want to just rotate it, you know, just kind of also guess and tr try, try and guess. Instead, I just want to turn off the near snap and snap to this edge right here. And that's it. The clipping plane has been rotated to the correct, uh, to the correct angle. Now, uh, the movement of it is going to be a little bit awkward because the arrows are not aligned. X, Y, Z arrows are not aligned with the clipping plane anymore. There is one trick that you can do, uh, and it's if you go to, uh, I believe, Gumball. No, not Gumball. Yes, Gumball, here in the bottom, and you right-click on it. You can choose to align to object. Bam, like that. And see how now th these arrows are not aligned with the world coordinates, but rather they are aligned with the object coordinates, right? So again, you can kind of move the clipping plane by 90 degrees, uh, like perpendicular to its uh, cutting direction, which is really nice, or along its cutting direction, I guess. Let's turn on the cutting for the perspective view of the clipping plane, in the clipping plane properties, I mean, like that. And let's just move the clipping plane inwards. And I will say, um, I wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Do we do something like this? Perhaps we should. Okay, something like this sounds like, at least it looks fine. So we have a cut. Is it right through the middle? I think it's right through the middle, right? Uh, let me undo and just move it by four meters. Yeah, it is right through the middle. So let's just have it uh, right through the middle of the polygon in this case. And I need to make 2D now, right? Okay, small problem. If I just go to, you know, the, 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 the right view, so the right view is not correct, but I think if I change this, if I right click on it, I go to set view and I change this to left view, then this looks correct, right? I see my clipping plane, I see my uh, my roof, I see my floor slab, I see a cut through the landscape. So it looks correct, but it's actually not because the cut itself is rotated, right? 
So I can see stuff that usually uh, that typically I shouldn't be able to see, for instance, this edge right here. So this is inaccurate, this is wrong. To make it right, I actually need to go to perspective view, right? And I need to go to C planes. And this is going to be the only advanced portion of the whole tutorial series that, uh, that we're having, right? This is advanced. Uh, so keep that in mind. But it is important to learn as soon as possible. So when you have a clipping plane that's not aligned with your world XYZ coordinates, you go to C planes. Well, first you position the clipping plane uh, you know, in the correct position so that it cuts properly. Uh, you go to C planes, then you go to C planes. You click on this, set C plane by three points. Right, this tool right here. Set C plane by three points. Click it. It will ask you for C plane origin. See how I'm looking at the clipping plane according to how it's cutting? So I'm looking at the back of the clipping plane and it's cutting to away from me. Uh, sorry, it's cutting everything uh, behind itself, but it's looking away from me, right? That, that little uh, dimple there is, is looking away. So when I'm looking at the clipping lane like, like that, and it asks me for seaplane origin, I will click on the bottom left corner first, right? That's the origin. Okay, now it asks me for x, di x direction. So that's going to be bottom right uh, corner. Click. Uh, come on, click. And then it's going to ask, uh, ask me for seaplane orientation. So that's going to be top left corner. Bam. See how this whole, uh, the whole world, uh, the, the position? So this grid is the world grid, right? And it was flat on the ground, right? It was flat in X, Y. Now it's not anymore. Now it's aligned with the clipping plane. So we, uh, we kind of just changed the changed the orientation of the world, right? To, to be according to our clipping plane. That's the first step. Second step is looking at a plan of it, right? So if I go to set view, we were in the C planes tab and now, now I'm going to set view tab. I can click on this plan view of C plane or you can type in plan, what, uh, both will work. Right, click on that plan view, plan, or type in plan. And now we have a clean version of this, right? So notice how here, where I showed you that there is a like a surface that I shouldn't be able to see, here there is no surface that I'm not, you know, that I shouldn't be able to see, right? So this is the clean version, the correct version. Okay, so now uh, all we need to do is just, let's just quickly jump to, so here, this is the top view. All of these are now weird. Uh, let me just select um, select all of my geometry, right? And notice that it still says perspective view, right? So it's fine. Um, so so I just select all of my geometry in the perspective view, and I type in make two D, make two D, and I hit enter. Kind of same settings as as, uh, as before. Uh, we don't really need to add or remove anything. Maybe uh, for this one, I will keep the scene silhouette. Maybe I'll have a use for it. So scene silhouette, turn that one on. And I'll just call it section. Ugh, keep, keep doing the caps lock thing. Section AA. Hit OK. It will calculate it. it it's done calculating. Um, do we have like a top view? Yeah, we kind of have a top view here. So I will just move it somewhere here for now, just for, for a tiny bit. And now I will reset everything to how it was before, because that's important as well, right? So let's, first of all, let's go to C planes and click on this icon right here, this tool right here, set C plane world top. 
This is the default position of the cplane as you start the file. Set cplane world top immediately changes the. By the way, cplane is construction plane. Uh, if you know, if anyone's interested. So it sets the cplane to back to its original position, and but we are still locked to the plan view, right? We are unable to rotate. So I will just right click on the perspective view. I'll go to set view and I'll choose perspective. And now that's it, right? Uh, this C plane is as it was before. Uh, clipping plane is doing its thing and so on. Uh, one thing, one important thing, I think, is sometimes you do this. Uh, notice how I've, I've, I, I took my section drawing here and I'm dragging it and now it's gone. And I keep doing make to D, make to D, make to D, and I can't see the freaking section drawing, right? And then I ask the teachers what the hell is going on and the teachers uh, tell you, have you tried turning off uh, the clipping of the clipping plane for that particular view and then you turn it off and you go like ah that's where it is and usually at that point you have like 50 of them right so make sure that you know if you can't find something first of all make sure that it's not in a hidden layer second of all make sure that uh, it's not behind the clipping plane right okay Let's work with this uh, section here. Let me position it somewhere here, like that. Uh, let's go to top view. And let's just see what what we uh, what is it that we have to work with here. <laughs> so a few circles. That's fine. Um, Right, so the trees, I don't like the trees. I will, I will uh, change the trees in just a, uh, just a bit, but the building itself is fine. So section AA, we have clipping planes, curves, scene silhouette, and tangents. So let's see tangents as blue color. So only these lines are tangents. Um, I don't need those lines, so I will just delete that layer altogether. Scene silhouette, let's make that one blue color. Uh, okay, why are you not showing up? Let's hide everything. So that is the scene silhouette. So it, did, it made a lot of mistakes when trying to do the scene silhouette. This is unusable. Uh, I will delete that layer. Curves. This is fine. Clipping plane uh, intersections. This is fine. So let me change the clipping plane intersections to red. I always use red for that just to see where we are cutting through. And now I will just clean everything up. So wherever you have, uh, wherever you're making cuts, you will never see behind the cut, right? So you'll never see additional stuff inside of the cut. All of the cuts in the architectural proposal level uh, drawing are merging into one, uh, well, not volume, but uh, in, 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 into one shape, so there is no lines in between the cuts. That's why I am removing, for instance, this line here. Um, and then we don't need any of these. Uh, that is clean, 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 not clean. Now clean enough, not clean, now clean enough. That one, um, that's fine. This is good. Um, delete that. Basically, those lines that are uh, that I am deleting right now. For instance, this one is us looking at the inside of this box. That's all it is, right? We are just looking at the insides of this box, or not the box, but the ribbon, uh, which. I don't want to see. It needs to be like a solid cut. Okay, that's done. And that is good. Oh yeah, and we also trim. Get rid of that. So trim is your friend. Trim that. Trim that. Okay, so we have the wall, the roof, the floor slab. For some reason, stuff that's going through the floor slab, so it needs to be 
deleted and below the floor slab actually we have the whole landscape so actually this whole thing is us seeing the inside of the landscape which we shouldn't see so we're deleting it there's a lot of like this um information handling in vault right how do you treat information and how do you understand the three-dimensionality of your object of your geometry that you're creating and it is uh, quite an important um uh, uh, quite an important thing to train and to be able to do, right? To assess whether or not you're looking at the inside of a volume or outside of a volume. It seems to be, you know, very straightforward, but actually poses a lot of problems uh, with the students um, and professionals as well, honestly. Um, so it's something that needs training for sure. Okay, so we have this kind of cleaned up. I think this is uh, good enough. Um, yeah, this is uh, good enough. And we will continue working with this in just a second. Let's do the last, uh, last drawing. Um, and that is going to be an ax uh, axonometric view, right? So I don't even have a clipping plane anymore. I just deleted it. And I want to make an axonometric view. So I could, oh wait, I didn't delete the clipping plane. Now I deleted it. <laughs> so I could just select this view, right? And then just type in make 2D and, you know, call it a day. Uh, but this is, this wouldn't be axonometric. This would be perspective view, which is a different thing. To make it, uh, to create an axonometric view, first of all, you need an axonometric viewport, right? Here we have a perspective viewport. To make a perspective viewport into an axonometric one, you right click on its name, you go to set view, and you choose isometric, and you choose northeast, northwest, whichever you want. Um, so, oh, sorry, set view, isometric, I'll just choose northeast, N E. Click that, changes to axonometric view and which I can rotate. So you are not locked to those 45 degree angles. You can do, you know, whichever view you want. And I will do something like this, I think. Yeah, I think this, this will look nice. But uh, at this point in time, I know that I will be using different trees for this particular view. So I will just go to my pavilion. No, not pavilion, landscape. Tree geometry, I'll just hide my tree geometry so that it's not in the way. Like that. Oh crap, I can't do that, right? Because I need the trees to be able to kind of to be able to place the the, the, the nice trees, to know where to place the nice trees. How do we do that? Well, I can just take the uh, take a point tool. And where's my helper layer? So in my helper layer, uh, I just take, uh, let's go for multiple points, multiple points too. And I'll just place, no, that's stupid. No, that's stupid, let's not do that. Do I just delete it? Delete the curves layer? No, maybe, yes. Yes, I should. Okay. <laughs> Good discussion. Good discussion. Anyway, um, I will be disabling trees for now, for just a tiny bit. And using, like selecting this whole geometry and choosing a, uh, like a nice angle to it. I think this is... Uh, yeah, this is fine. This is good enough. Just select it. Make 2D, hit enter. We have our like stuff going on here. Mm, ten, uh, like settings, uh, so tangent edges, uh, whatever, no. Scene silhouette, no. Hidden lines, no. Layer name, uh, axle. Hit OK. And it's going to do an axle for us. That's great. Let me just move it to the side. And don't, please, please don't, don't rotate the view now. 
<laughs> if you rotate the view, you'll need to do it again, right? So do your best to not rotate the view now. We will be unhiding the tree geometry, right? The trees, we're unhiding them. But we are hiding the, where is it? Where is it? The pavilion geometry. We're hiding that. And we're doing another make 2D. Make 2D. Another one. Also call it X, so that's fine. Hit OK. Let's jump to top view and also move it somewhere nearby. And still, we need to definitely not to rotate the view. Uh, by the way, if you want to save a view, uh, if you accidentally rotate it, you can. You can just type in named view, named view, hit enter, and uh, click on the save button. Call it uh, axo view. Hit OK. And that, uh, then at that point, you can kind of rotate the view. You know, whoops, I messed it up. And then just double click on the axo view. Uh, icon there, and then it's going to bring it back, right? Bring you back to the active view. Okay, so we have that done. One last thing, let's hide the trees again. So now the only thing that we have is the landscape geometry. Uh, we select it and we will use contour, contour on it. But this time I will not be using contour from bottom up, but rather from side to side, right? So uh, my Contour base point is going to be bottom left corner of the landscape. Contour um, uh, direction is going to be towards the bottom right corner of the landscape, like that. And this time contours should be every uh, 0 0.5 meters. Maybe that's even too much. Let's see. No, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so now we have a bunch of contours with the landscape. Let me just select everything and make 2D just to see how it works. You know, if it makes any mistakes, let's go to top view, place it here. Yeah, it does make a few mistakes, but uh, this is something that we can clean. Everything else is, seems to be perfect. So let me now go to axle view and turn off helper select object so i have my all of my contours selected i don't need them so i'll just delete them uh turn on the tree geometry turn on the pavilion geometry that's great um and let me change this back from axle view to set view perspective so we're back to, to normal. I always like to change everything back to normal after I finish working with it. Okay, back in top view, we have now three components for our axle. We have the, the pavilion itself with some landscape stuff. We have uh, the trees with some landscape stuff. And we have the contours with some landscape stuff. Right. So first, let me fix these contours. And I will be using a tool that uh, I haven't shown you before. Um, and that tool is called Blend CRV. Blend Curves. Blend CRV. Enter. Select Curve to Blend. And I will try to blend between this curve and this curve. Cool, huh? <laughs> it just kind of imagines how they would connect. Uh, I will make sure that, that join is turned on, so they're being joined, hit OK, that's it, they got blended. Then from this uh, to this, and then from this to this, right? Same thing here, this might be a little bit more tricky. Nah, it does a great job. Easy. So blend curves will blend two curves together. Really nice little tool. Okay. So we have that. Uh, now let's uh, transfer our contour lines to our landscape. 
uh, to our like th let's say this guy right here is the main uh, geometry and our contours are just uh, sub geometry you know like secondary geometry uh, so we're adding contours to this one so first things uh, first things first I will probably explode everything so I'll select all of these lines and type in explode so that I can delete the unnecessary bits right I only care about the top of the landscape so I'm kind of cleaning it up and deleting all of the stuff that I don't need like that great great oh, nope uh, great okay so we have that actually let me move it somewhere closer we have it like that right then what else we won't need? Well, we won't. We definitely won't need stuff that is um, here on the ground. But actually, I will. I will clean it um, once the contours are in the correct position. Uh, so let's let's move them. Before I do that, I will select all of them. I will create a new layer, and I'll call it contours. <laughs> contours. Uh, for uh, axel i will make them a beautiful blue color and change object layer like move all of these to that contours for axel layer select all of them move from this corner point to this corner point right here that's it right so they are now located in the correct position and now you can actually see how much uh, how much of it I will need to clean, which is fine. Um, I will just kind of go through it. And I think that it is important for me to show you this so that you don't think that uh, at some point you will uh, not need to do any manual work. No, architecture is like, be prepared. 90% of it is this, just sitting down and Cleaning up the contours, one after the other. Okay, so that trim. So I'm trimming, trimming between two curves, and I'm just selecting uh, between which two curves am I going to trim away the contours uh, to have a clean, uh, clean drawing. Uh, so we have that. Um, then we have the rooftop, of course, it's going to, oops, not that one, that one. Of course, it's going to trim away some of the contours. So, for instance, these two are, are gone. Then we have this edge here and this edge here. Can I just, um, yeah, let me be a little bit funky about it and then just do that. No, that's unnecessary. I can be a little bit more cheeky and choose all of the, select all of the curves of the axle uh, layer and use them to trim. Not delete, delete is bad, <laughs> trim. Um, and then get rid of the contours this way. Okay, so we don't need those. We definitely don't need those. Um, those are gone. So I'm going around the perimeter, perimeter and uh, I'm just deleting all of the unnecessary bits. Okay. okay. So actually, I could have kept those maybe. Uh, let me keep those. And let me just delete the ones on the floor slab. Yeah, I think that's going to be nicer. If we do it that way. Like that, and that, that. Okay, like that. It's trimmed away here. Mm -hmm. Kind of a little bit of, of, of cleaning up here. I'm not. Uh, I'm not being super precise with this. Uh, you, you'll see why in just uh, in, in just a second. Uh, 
Oh, you little. Okay, there we go. That, 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 that. A lot of clicking. Mm -hmm. There we go. Hmm. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> this is something that I never miss. But honestly, once you get the the, the, the muscle memory down. It's not that uh, that big of a problem anymore. Uh, it becomes like how do I pronounce it? Like like the second nature to you know like do, doing these uh, contours, uh, tr trimming them away, and so on, and like figuring out different ways of how you can actually. Is this rotated? No, it's not okay. Um, figuring out like different ways of how you can actually. Um, clean up the whole uh, the whole 3d model um, before you export it so that you don't need to clean up the the drawing as much but the rule of thumb is that if you don't spend enough time on the 3d model itself you will need to spend the time on the um, on the two-dimensional drawing, right? So it's it's either one or the other. You can't uh, can't cheat the system, right? Can't have a dirty model and then uh, somehow get clean drawings from it. That's not how it works. Okay, and I think that one is there, and then we disconnect that one and kind of make a few more cuts here. I think those are going to be almost the final ones. So that's fine. I'll show you, you know, once we go around the perimeter, we will be able to just delete everything that is inside of, of our, you know, or of our perimeter that we've just deleted. Everything that's going to be inside is just going to get deleted and it should be should be fine theoretically. We'll see. Up, 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 up. Um, we will see. That is okay, that gets trimmed, that gets trimmed, that one is okay. That gets trimmed, okay. Do we, do we try? Nah, let's try. Moment of truth. So I will hide my curves here and I can actually kind of see some stuff that I can kind of select and delete, right? So this is the stuff that I was talking about, like stuff that I can, um, I went around the perimeter and now I can, I am able to select some stuff that I want to be deleted and this is part of it. And what about that line? Yes, it is also a part of it. And then, so you can see immediately, this is clean. Like, it's cleaned up. Uh, there is a, a few lines missing. There are a few lines missing, but that is fine. Ooh, and it's, it's very broken down here, but um, I will probably not spend too much time uh, cleaning up that, that area, but if I, you know, if, if, if this was my actual project, I would. Um, let's come back here, turn off the curves, see what we can do. So that, 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 that. There we go. Yeah, we're getting there. We are getting there. And notice how I use the marking between um, from left to right and from right to left. Remember that those are two different like marking w ways of how you mark, right? From left to right and from right to left. 
and I'm using them um, the way I'm using them is, is I, I do think you know I, I, I think when should I use which right for, 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 for what reason for instance here I don't want to select everything like that instead I will just be selecting this single item here right same thing here right this time I'll click and here maybe I will select a few that's way too many um, let's hide the curves layer so that it's not in the way right so it's always like you always think when, when, when you're selecting stuff uh, do I need to use the uh, right hand side one or the left hand side one um, so we have that, that, what are you? Uh, do I need to delete you? Yes, I do. Um, and we're almost done. We're almost done with cleaning up just a few more lines to go. Uh, that one is fine. This line is also bad. Um, delete, delete, delete. That's it. See? Wasn't that bad. What was it like five? Uh, no, not five. Maybe ten. Ten minutes, right, of cleaning. That's definitely not that bad. Okay, so we have now the contours here, and all that's left is the trees. And in terms of the trees, I will do something a little bit different with it. So I will actually add the trees uh, a little bit later. But for now, let's just have it as it is, as two separate entities. So I do have all of these drawings now uh, set up. And the next step is to uh, create layouts for these drawings, right? Just like we did in uh, AutoCAD. Usually for you know a project like this, you don't need layouts. So I wouldn't be creating layouts, but it is what it is, right? Um, we need to teach you how to create layouts for a larger project, right? And this is a very good uh, place where you can practice. So let me, um, here in the bottom, click on this plus sign, right? Where you see perspective, top, front, low, those are your viewports. And here you can add a viewport or a layout. So click the plus sign and choose new layout, like that. Page uh, name uh, or, or layout name is going to be well. Let's say this one is going to be for our um, for for our site plan, site plan like that. Um, yeah, we can have it either portrait or landscape mode. I, I prefer to always have it landscape mode. Printer. Um, Either Adobe PDF, Microsoft Print to PDF, or Rhino PDF, whichever you want. I will choose Adobe PDF. So size A3, landscape, uh, 420 by 297, initial detail count, 1. Okay, we hit OK. And we are inside of our first layout. So the way layouts work in Rhino is the same way as layouts work in, uh, in AutoCAD. You have your page, you have your frame, a window into the model view, right? And you just double click inside of the frame to zoom in to like to lock your view onto the, for instance, this landscape right here. Right, so that's that's very much straightforward. So perhaps I will even no, I don't need to do anything actually. Um, I will just kind of orient it, like center it like that, and I will double click outside of my window. Right. So when you do when you double click inside of the window of this frame right here, if when you double click inside, then you can kind of you know. Zoom in, zoom out, blah, blah, blah. You can do all of that stuff inside of, uh, with everything that's inside of the window. When you double click out, it's closed and now you're working with the page itself, right? Very important distinction. Um, how do you actually have the correct scale? Well, you actually select the border here 
you go to why is it so small uh, you go to properties so that's the window border right you go to its properties and here it says detail right this this icon right here you click on it and it's going to say scale value one millimeters on page equals to how many meters in the model okay so if one millimeter equals one meter right what's the scale of it one to a thousand right if one millimeter equals 0 0.1 meters the scale of it is one to 100 right so if one millimeter is uh, 0 0.2 meters it's one to 200 easy Is it 1 to 200? 1 millimeter equals uh, 0 0.2 meters, which is 20 centimeters, which is 200 millimeters. So 1 millimeter, 1 to 200, yes. So 1 millimeter, 200 meters, uh, 200 millimeters. Okay, so to have a scale of 1 to 200, it's 1 millimeter to 0 0.2 meters, and then I will just lock the scale. Uh, just you know, to, to have it kind of nice and tidy here. And yeah, that, that's about it. Notice how, um, in, let's say in the top view, oh, here we don't have any colors, sorry. Let's create more uh, layouts. Let's create all of the layouts and I'll be really quick about making them. Um, and then I will kind of continue. So I'll click the plus sign, go to new layout, call it, uh, ground floor uh, adobe pdf sure a3 sure landscape 420 yeah everything is fine uh double click inside zoom in to this uh ground floor i believe this one is going to also be 1 to 200 uh so i'll just select 1 to 0 0.2 yeah that looks fine actually um, that border there is mess messed up so i will just um select the control point here and just move it to the side so that it kind of cuts away that that border so that it's not in the way anymore just a nice little uh, control over the the frame um okay so we have that done new layout uh name uh section aa also a3 super double click inside zoom into the section this guy will really need to be moved up away from here so that I don't need to mess around with it. Or actually we can kind of have it have him here. Zoom into the section, double click outside. Let's see, uh, we could have one to 150, but that is not a decent um, resolution uh, or, or scale. So I'll just do one to, uh, one to 200 again. And I will mess around with the, whoa, not, not the scale like that, rather the control points of my frame, just to position it nicely. Uh, so we have our section. And then one more layout, uh, EXO, same settings, double click, zoom in. And this one doesn't require uh, a scale, so I'll just leave it be as it is. That's fine. Looks looks okay. Um, right. So we have our all all of our um, layout. Right. So now I want to be able to determine, for instance, section AA. I want to be able to determine what's thick, what's thin. Uh, you know how it's all going to look like, and also actually build up some information here. First, of, uh, first things first, uh, these borders, I don't want them to be printed out. Uh, so I will uh, go to layers and I will just create a new layer and I'll call it no print. 
I was like doing this, no print layer, and I'll just select these borders, change object layer, and I will make sure that this layer is not going to be printed. Same thing with uh, this border, change this border, change this border, uh, cha change, there we go. So now the thicknesses, right? Um, we need to, we need to expand the layers tab a bit to see much more stuff that, that we might have missed, right? Uh, so let's go to section, right? To the section so that we can mess around with the thicknesses a little bit. Uh, first things first, section AA here, you can see that thickness is set to be 0 0.5 print width, right? So basically, if you just expand the Layers tab here, you'll see line type, which can be a dashed line, or it can be a continuous line, or anything like that. And then you have print color, not display color, print color. Color in which it's going to be printed out. And then you have print width. So for instance, I can have display color red, but the print color will be black, right? So I changed this color to black. And now, for some reason, this one is not changing here, not previewing it as a print, uh, as how it's going to look like when it's printed. So I can force it to, uh, and I can force a layout to show you how it's going to look like when it's printed. If I type in print display, that's a command, print display, hit enter. And then I, where it says state off, I click on it and I click on on and then just hit enter to, to finish the tool. So now uh, this layout will show me the actual, the correct thickness of, of the lines as they are going to be printed out. And actually I kind of like how it looks like uh, clipping plane intersection 0 0.5 millimeters layer thickness, I think it's okay, you know, it's, it, it's fine. Um, right, so we have that. Uh, same thing with Axel here. Uh, Print display. Oh, uh, state is on. Okay, so now everything is, is being shown as print display, I think. Yes, yes, everything is being shown as print display. That's great. Let's go through, uh, through it all one by one. In terms of uh, site plan, uh, everything is kind of okay. Yeah, I don't have any complaints here. For now, I'll, I'll leave it be. That's fine. We will need to add some stuff to it, but, but for now it's fine. Then for ground floor, we need to add some... Um, uh, we, we need to change the colors, right? So let me expand the ground floor plan um, layer. And let us go to clipping plane color, clipping plane intersection color, and change this to black. And let's go to contours color and change this to maybe gray. We can't see it anymore. <laughs> maybe a little bit. Uh, let's just go for dark gray. Uh, but actually, I want it to be uh, thinner. So it's not going to be default layer thickness. But from AutoCAD, of course, you remember that 0 0.13 or 0 0.09 is the thinnest line that you can have. So I'll just use 0 0.13 for the contours. Above the cut should also be very thin, 0 0.13. Uh, it should have, uh, let's say, dark gray color, but it should be dashed or dashed dotted, depending if you're going for international regulations or Swedish ones. So above the cut, I will just click on this line type, continuous, and I'll just choose hidden hidden line type, like that. Shows up like this. Cool? Cool. All right, so this one uh, does the trick. What else? Well, where it says uh, default line thickness, it scales according to the size, uh, to the, to the drawing size uh, on the screen and also to the drawing size as it's being printed out, meaning it's not a stable line thickness. So I always prefer changing default 
you know, to one of the either thin, medium, or thick one. Thin is 0 0.13, medium is 0 0.2 or 0 0.24, and thick is 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Uh, so this is going to be medium, 0. Point, I'll go for 0. 0.18. And curves is also going to be medium, 0. 0.18. That's just what I prefer doing. Let me go through uh, all of these real quick and clean, clean them up as I go. So side plan, uh, all of these are defaults. So curves, 0. 0.18. Tangents, 0. 0.18. Uh, contour 0 0.13 uh, and 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 dark gray color it's great then we have section AA section AA is kind of done except for curves which are default and I just changed it to 0 0.18 then axo is not done I need to change the color of the contours to dark gray and make them 0 0.13 while the curves themselves are 0 0.18. And then we have that no print layer. I will just change its print width to, if I scroll down um, to the bottom of the list, there is no print. So I click that, minus one millimeters, right? That means it's not going to be printed. That's it. Okay, um, let me actually stop the recording just for a second. All right, seems like I'm getting tired a little bit here. Where were we? Um, right, no print layer, so we are working with layers and then colors and so on. Um, so very briefly, I showed you the color type, uh, sorry, line type, type, line type, line type, settings. And basically these are just, you know, your, your regular ones. You can create a custom one, uh, but I will not be showing you how to do it. Uh, I think like these line types are more than enough to give your, you know, creative graphics across, right? You have the dots, you have the hidden line and so on, and that's fine. But I will show you how to change the line type scale because I think that's quite important. For instance, in the perspective view, if I look at the green lines here and I zoom into them quite heavily, I still can't really see. Can I, can I see the dashes? No, I can't see the dashes, right? What if I create a very thin one, a uh, very uh, small one? And where do we have the above the cut layer? Zoom into it. Yeah, now I can start seeing the dashes, but they are so small. While, for some reason, here in the, where is it, ground floor plan, they're quite big, right? Why is that? Well, that's because uh, here in the ground floor plan, uh, they are being scaled according to the size of the page, right? So their actual dash size is the same here on the page as well as in the perspective. <clears throat> if you want to change uh, their size, uh, you need to always use print display and actually look at them, how they're going to be printed out rather than how they're going to look like in the model space. Um, let's see how we can change the size. I will type in options and hit enter. That's the command. These are options for all of the geometry that we have in, not just geometry, but the file itself, Rhino file itself. And here we see line types. So I'll select it. And here you see all the different line types and you can add one, that's whatever. The more important thing is here, here you have line type scale, which you can change, right? So what would happen if I change this to 0 0.1, 10 times less and hit OK. Oh, well, that's weird. Why doesn't it change? Hmm, why did it stop working? Hello? No, please don't. Options. Um, did I mess something up? Hidden. Continuous. 0 0.1. Everything is fine. 
Uh, okay, let me do 10 then instead of 0 0.1 and let's see if that works. It doesn't. It actually doesn't, but it doesn't work here. So, okay, what, what this tells me is that uh, this, uh, this dashed line or the line type scale will only work on this, um, oh my God, it will only work on on the uh, model speed, within the model space, but it will not change anything within the uh, layout space. Okay, how do we work with this? Uh, we go back to options and we can choose to not scale um, the line types. And I don't really remember how to do that. But that's actually fine. Instead, we can specify here where we have line type scale, we can specify what is the scale in which, <clears throat> in which we are working. And as you probably noticed, in every one of our drawings, we, I was using scale of 1 to 200, right? So all I need to do here is just type in 200, hit OK. And now this will be exactly the, uh, will have the same exactly the same line type as the original <coughs> that's the only thing that i wanted to show right you type in the correct scale there um right so that one's done uh what's next next we talk about hatches okay let's go to the top view and let's hatch some things so you usually hatch stuff that you're cutting through and in this case we're only cutting through the uh, the ground floor plan as well as the the section right we're cutting through these uh, these two so what i'm going to do is let's start with ground floor plan i will turn off all of the layers except for clipping plane intersections because th those are you know the, the, the parts through which we cut and I'll create a new layer and call it hatch <clears throat> because I like to have a layer a separate layer for my hatches and I will um, straight up just make it my active layer select all of these curves here and type in hatch that's it you can choose the, uh, the pattern of the hatch. I don't really like doing that. Um, yeah, you can, you can do a bunch of stuff here. I'll just hit okay. So we have, uh, you know, just like your regular AutoCAD hatches, we have the same thing here. Um, in terms of, since this is a solid hatch, the line type doesn't matter, the thickness doesn't matter, right? Um, okay, so we are done with this one. And it looks like that, looks great. Um, I will actually select uh, the hatch layer. So right click, select objects. I will select all of the objects in the hatch layer and I will type in bring forward or bring to front, a command that's called bring to front. It will just simply take the hatch and visually bring it to front uh, over all of the other lines, just a small, small little thing, but really helps uh, with uh, aesthetics. So if we look at ground floor plan, looks fine. For some reason, doesn't bring it forward though. Let's see. Bring to front again. Wait a minute. Oh no, uh, I messed it up. <laughs> uh, yikes, I messed up the scale. Sorry about that. Um, if you kind of mess up the scale and you don't know, you know, uh, uh, you do an accident, right? You do a whoopsie, uh, then you just need to kind of recenter it and kind of repeat the same procedure, you know, double click out outside, go to properties and choose, wait, is this the correct scale now? Uh, one to one, one to 0 0.2. Oh yeah. Okay. So that is, it is the correct scale now. So this is fine. This is actually okay how it looks like. I, I, I like it. Uh, let's do the same thing with section AA because it also needs some love. So let's go back to top view. Select my uh, section AA, go to layers, uh, section AA layer, turn off the curves, just leave the 
uh, clipping plane intersections layer turned on. And I will select all of these curves here, you know, where I'm cutting through the concrete of my building. And I'll actually create a new layer and call it uh, hatch as well. Hatch, make my active layer, blah, 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 you know, the drill. And type in hatch to hatch inside of these curves. What the hell is going on there? Okay, why are you doing that? So that, that was weird. Let's do it one by one, I guess. Uh, or not one by one, but rather, let's try again. Select, hatch. Uh, that's weird, but that's fine. Can I just choose boundary? So if you choose boundary in the hatch settings, then you can click on every separate uh, boundary inside of every separate island and you can choose to either hatch that island or not hatch that island. That's very useful, I think. A very useful tool. So we have that done. Enter. Enter. Now it's now that works, I guess. And for the ground, I will also, of course, hatch it, but I will say hatch. Uh, it starts freaking out a little bit, uh, but that's fine. It just asks me to click inside the region. So I'll click inside here. So I'm just hatching the ground, enter. I'll choose, uh, let's go for just your regular angular hatch and pattern rotation, maybe 90 degrees. Maybe I just want it like that. Um, Pattern scale, I think if we do like 20, ooh, not 20, like five. No, not five, two. Two is fine. Uh, so I'll use two, something like this. Um, that should be good enough. Let's look at section AA here. Looks okay. You know, could be better, but uh, looks looks fine. Uh, for the hash layer, it's a little bit too thick, I think. So I will change the print width of it to 0.13 to have it thin. Uh, but I will keep the black color of it. That's fine. Okay, we are done with uh, this portion. Let us, before I forget, let us name every layout here in the bottom left corner, right? So we need to create a stamp. And remember, uh, do I have it here? Wait, um, page digital, AD10. Remember the example of the stamp? Uh, where was it? Right here. AD10 to 220, 2020, uh, site plan 1 to 200, your name. Right, let's do that. Um, and it's going to be located here. So I will be creating text. So let me create one more layer and call it text. Right, text, and uh, yeah, sure. Uh, black color, print as black color, print width 0 0.18, like normal print width, and just use a command called text. Like that. And here it asks you, okay, what kind of text do you want? So I will just wait. Is it just creating text in random places? Text. Oh, first you define the text and then you place it. Okay, so here I will just type in AAD20, uh, 2020. Um, and 2020 can be smaller, so uh, height 0 0.8 or 0 0.8 millimeters. Why are you not scaling? Hello, scale. Oh, okay, so uh, we can't have, yeah, fine. We can't have every, um, like in, in the same tool, we can't have two different sizes, that's fine. Uh, so I'll just have AADA20 as a separate entity, like so, place it here. It's way too small, so I'll just use scale on it, just regular scale, click on the bottom left corner, scale it five times, like that. Yeah, that's fine. ADA20. Then, actually, since I'm lazy, I'll just make a copy of it downwards, holding down the Alt key, double click it, type in 2020. Right. And then scale again uh, 0 0.5. 
Something like this. Move it down. Perfect. Uh, now I will... Um, wait, how does it look like? Uh, name of the drawing, name of the author, I believe. So let's go for copying it sideways like that, copying it downwards like that. That means we will need to move it up, all of it up like that. That's fine. And now let's give it a name. So where are we? We are at the site plan. So I'll just call it site plan one to 200. Like that. And then we will call this uh, Yes. There we go. That. Okay. So we have that. Now let's position it properly. Something like this. Usually I also like to kind of just create a box around it. Like a box around my, my, my stamp. Like that. Maybe an additional box here. Like that. You know, just, just to make it a little bit... Um, just a tiny bit cleaner. Okay, so we have this. Um, then you would think that, you know, oh shit, I'll need to do it again, you know, multiple times. No, you don't. Uh, you just kind of select it, Control C to copy. Control C, C as in citrus. Um, Control V to paste into the ground floor uh, plan, into section AA, Control V into axle control v right and then uh you just go you just change the name of it axonometry here um section aa then it's, we just change it i believe it's also one to 200 so we just need to change to section a dash a um then we have ground floor Floor plan. It's the it's the only floor plan, right? So it doesn't matter. Um, and that's it, right? We're done. Okay, so that's text on the layout. Um, you might want to add section markups either on the layout or in the drawings, uh, like in the actual uh, model space. Uh, it's up to you. I prefer adding the markups for the sections in the model space and i remember that my sections were made right through the middle of uh, this building right so let me just kind of create a line there like that so you can find the middle line any way you want uh, this is just my way um, and it's definitely not the best <laughs> But it works, right? So as long as it works, I'm happy. Uh, I'll just kill it up. Okay. Um, and I will just move it from here to somewhere here. Okay. So this line is just going through the middle. Um, through the middle of the drawing. And I can draw these two nice... Uh, Triangles, which are a bit too big, maybe something like that. Perpendicular. That's not. That doesn't look perpendicular. That is perpendicular. Okay. Um, so the way you show uh, section um, arrows is absolutely up to you. You can choose whichever graphics you you want. Right. So it's 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 yeah. Again, it's absolutely up to you. I prefer. Oops. Well, actually, that's fine. Um, I prefer using. Let me just show real quick. There we go. These kind of graphics. And then we do text. Uh, a. Uh, place the A here. Uh, rotate the A here. I don't really need it to be super precise, but yeah. So I have A and I'm saying that it's going to be cutting and looking towards there, but it's not. I am lying. It needs to be rotated around 180 degrees. 
So it's actually looking towards there, right? So the arrow is showing where it's looking, looking at. I change everything to text layer, like that. I take this, I copy it from here to the opposite side of the drawing, like that. Then I take both of these markups, AA, and I copy them into my ground floor player, uh, player ground floor plan layer as well. Uh, that's it. So now I know uh, I know where you know wh where is the line uh, where I'm taking my AA section located. Um, there's also like markups for height. Um, you know, like what is plus minus zero 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 in your building and, and so on. But I will not be um, working with those. Um, maybe here, maybe here. Let, let's just do a really quick one, right? So the way I write the markups is like so. And then text. Um, where is the plus minus? Plus minus 0 0.000. Whoa, that's a, that's a big boy. Uh, let's scale it down a bit. Scale. Uh, Wait, is this scale 1D? Yes, it is. Uh, so just not scale 1D, scale from the corner 0 0.2, maybe. Uh, yeah, that, that should be still readable, I think. Uh, maybe not. Uh, scale um, 2. Okay, that should be fine. Actually, this one can be scaled as well by 2. By 2. There we go. That's... Uh, Big enough. Okay, so that's uh, if that is 0, 0.00, then the question is how high is this point? How high is this point? How high is eh, everything else is whatever. Well, I would ask the question of how high is this point, but we, we, we don't care. Uh, so this point would be, I just measure distance from here to here, and I know that it's 2.5 uh, meters, I double click on the text, type in 2.500, and then plus at the, at the start of it, plus 2.5, and here it's going to be 5 meters if I don't, yeah, it's 5, so plus minus, so just plus 5.000, that's it, uh, let's check how it looks like in the section AA setup. Uh, get scaled. Ah, crap. Why? Why do you get scaled? I hate that it does that. Um, let's see. So apparently the text gets scaled as well. And can we change it so that, that it doesn't? Models free scale. Is that like, what if I do 200 here? Oh, it's just going to kind of scale, scale up by 200. Wait, I need to fix this. Just a second. So if it's scaling here, that means we need to... Okay, fine. We delete, delete, delete. We just leave the, <clears throat> the arrows here. Instead, we will jump into... Uh, section AA and we will rebuild the text here in section AA. That's fine, I guess. Uh, text, yep, that's perfect. Put it there, scale. Now here the scale is actually correct. Um, two, yeah, that looks fine. Uh, copy. There are like, I know some of you might start saying that, oh, you know, I would have done this in a different way. Yes, uh, there are a lot of different ways of how it is, how you can do it. Like actually anything in Rhino, there's at least five different ways of how you can do it. And uh, I'm just showing you one of them. Uh, later on, you'll be able to investigate any other, you know, variation or method or workflow that, that can be done, that can be used, sorry. Uh, let's do some trees, right? Um, and that is going to be quite the last, one of the last things that I'll show you uh, with these uh, tutorials. How to import stuff from the internet into your drawings, how to pimp your drawings. Well, you go to the 
internet and you type in pimpmydrawing.com. Um, and then you scroll, scroll, scroll. So there's a lot of people. Maybe we can grab a person as well. Um, that's a lady. That's a person who's falling. That's a little bit too dynamic. Segway person. That's kind of okay. Okay, let, let me just download DWG, not Adobe Illustrator, but the, rather a DWG file. I have it here. Good. Now let me go to trees and actually get some trees here. Uh, I want that. That looks nice. And also I want... And that looks nice. Willow tree. No, it's birch. Sorry, it's not willow. Okay. Uh, so we have these uh, these three DWG files. Let me just get them to desktop. Birch tree, uh, lady walking, and uh, person walking, and uh, apricot tree. Let's start with the person. I'll, I'll uh, go back to Rhino. So we are in modeling space. That's great. Uh, let's turn on layers. That's fine. Um, I will take the person walking. Uh, from wherever it is in, on the computer. I'll just drag in and drop it into my Rhino file. And make sure that you don't click open, click import. If you click open, it's going to close the, <laughs> the file that you're working on. If you click import, it's going to merge, right? So import file, hit okay. Uh, you don't care, you just hit okay again. And it imports the person. So the scale is wrong, right? But that's easy to fix. We just take the person and we measure the distance of the person from uh, its bottom of the boot to the top of its head. And we see that it's 1.65 meters, uh, sorry, 1.65 kilometers. That means the person is uh, 10, 1,000 times too big, right? So we just type in scale. Click on the bottom of the boot and we type in 0 0.001. I think that's a thousand times less. Scale it down, move it. And now the person is located here. And apparently, like the height of the person is now 1.65 meters, which is, you know, okay, average, I guess. Um, and then we will just move the person down so that it you know, it's, it's, it's right on the ground. That's it. Let's look at it uh, in the section AA. Okay, so we need to change some things. We, we need to change the colors. So you can see that the DWG file imports with its own layers, of course. So outer layer, uh, which is this pink, uh, or not pink, uh, purple. Purple color is going to, of course, be black, and it's going to be 0 0.18, uh, 0 0.13. Yeah, that's fine. And the inner one is going to be uh, gray. You don't see it, but it's there. Actually, you can go for dark gray. And instead of default, it's going to be hairline. So as thin as possible. So we get our person here. Okay, uh, so trees, 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 trees. Let us import some trees. Let's jump back to perspective view. Um, ba -ba -ba. We do have apricot tree, drag and drop, import file, okay. Hit okay again, you have your tree. It automatically gets selected by the way. So by, by now I know that the trees are 10 times, uh, 1000 times too big. So I will scale them down by 0.001. So now their uh, correct scale is ZS. That's a very small tree. That's fine. Uh, we will be we will work with this. And uh, we do have another tree. Let me just get it in here as well. Hello, uh, there it is. Lush birch tree. Import file. Uh, yep. And just scale it down, move it, and close that. And okay, 
So we have a birch tree and a apricot tree, sure. Uh, and we have a bunch of you know placeholders here. So let me first place the trees as I see fit, and then we will get rid of the placeholders in here, and also we will finally be working with stuff from here. So first things first, taking the geometry. And <laughs> yeah, let's copy. No, do we copy? Maybe we don't copy. Wait, what if I hold down the Alt key and copy? Yeah, that's that works. Uh, so let's copy the geometry and just let's uh, let's place it like that and scale it up so that it's kind of the correct size. So that's one uh, tree here. Then I take the other one. Place it here, scale it up, make a copy there, that's two. Then I will take the third one, place it there, scale it up, uh, maybe something like this. That's going to be the third one, and that's fine. Uh, in here it's fine, and then I need to fix the, the right, uh, left hand side. So making a copy, scaling it up, placing, and my apricot tree, making a copy, scaling it up. Ugh. Actually, no. Uh, moving up, scaling up. Moving around. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, placing it. Okay, so we have uh, we have this done. So now I will um, I will turn off the trees first of all, right? That's that's important. And I will go to section AA and I'll turn off the hatches and clipping plane intersections. I'll turn off those as well. So now I'm only left. Or actually, clipping plane intersections can stay. I'm only left with the trees themselves, which means I can mitigate and get rid of the old trees. This is a column. These two lines are uh, is, is the column that I have, so I'm not deleting them. Uh, but the trees themselves I do delete and blend curve to reconnect the landscape. Okay, that's cleaned up. And then this side as well, delete, delete, delete. Whew, delete, 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 <laughs> delete. <laughs> okay, so we have that. Um, now, let me turn the outer uh, outer line work back on, and let me just select the big one here and type in trim. So the big one is in the front. It's going to be in the front like so. That means it trims away everything that is inside of it. Just like that. Oh yeah, and it needs to trim away that stuff as well. So we're, we're making like depth. Uh, we're, we're talking about uh, depth of you know, what, what, what's in front of what. And uh, we're reducing convolution. Also, the clipping plane will Trim off contours here. Also, the trees are in the back behind the the line work or, or the pavilion rather. So I trim away this area here, this area here. Wait, that, that got trimmed away as well. So I undo and I make sure that I do select this. Uh, this area and then type in trim. There we go. Now, now it's a clean, uh, clean cut like that. And now I can just delete these. So it's a lot of cleaning up, right? Uh, also here. Oh my God! Trying to understand which one is which is kind of hard, but I think I managed. Uh, trim. No, no, no. No, no. 
No, and no, and no. Yeah, that's that's better. And then this needs to cut away this portion and this portion, and also this portion. And that's a lot of cutting. Anyway, it's a little bit convoluted there, but uh, this is clean enough. And we do kind of the same thing on this side. Trim, punk, punk. Here, trim, punk. punk. Oh wait, uh, I don't need that. Uh, or do I? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, okay, so I just delete that whole thing, that whole thing, that whole thing, that, and then this whole thing gets deleted. Oh my god, that's a lot of, a lot of things being deleted right now. Uh, yep. 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 Okay. Do I want to keep these? Yeah, I want to keep those. Okay, and we delete those. Um, and also, of course, the pavilion trims the tree. Ooh, this is becoming a little bit of a long, long one. Okay, we are done. Uh, let me just delete that and that and the other. We are done. No, we are not. Trim. Now we are done. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at the turn on the hatch and let's look at the section. AA here looks kind of nice, right? Uh, for some reason, why is this not registering? Hello, why are you? Wait, wait a minute. One, two, three. Top view. One, two, three. So, what are you? Why are you not? here section ea so this one is being uh, being troublesome so i'll just delete it uh the inner ones uh the inner lines i don't really like them uh, i will be deleting the inner layer altogether. okay so these two trees here i want to use them uh, in my axle but the way i'm going to use them in the axle is by creating a hatch from them or, or within them, right? So I still have my outer layer here, right? And they are in the outer layer. And let's go to the top view. Um, and I will just create a new one and I'll call it hatch tree, hatch tree. Select them, uh, make sure that hatch tree is turned on, type in hatch, enter, click inside of the tree, that's it. Self-determination, no hatches made, dick. Okay, sure, what about you? Can you do it? So the slip of sponge, oh my God. I hate when this happens. So let's see if we can actually solve it. What if I do this? Can we, can we hatch the top? Yes, we can. Okay, sure, so we do have half of a hatch. Uh, can we hatch the bottom? No, we can't. Self-intersecting loop. Okay, so um, see what I'm doing here? Like, if, if something doesn't work with a hatch, I will, I will be hatching it in parts. And if it still doesn't work, then I will be selecting the polyline itself and rebuilding it. Rebuild. Oh my god, that's 2,682 points. Okay, let's rebuild it to um, maybe like a thousand points. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, that's going to be uh, good. I think that's going to be good for the for the geometry. Yep, immediately hatches, <laughs> right? Okay, so I'm creating this uh, this hatch right here, and I'll be rebuilding uh, this uh, tree as well. Rebuild unknown command. Okay, rebuild. There we go. Thousand points. 
And this one should be like uh, 300 points. And actually this one as well. Everything else seems okay. So let's try hatching again. No, it doesn't work. Okay, uh, let's delete some and then try hatching. There is a way of how to find those self intersections within the curves, but it's it's a very obnoxious way, and I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Um, so we are trying to, shit, we're trying to do it cleanly from the get go, but it's not working. Okay, let's rebuild again uh, with uh, five hundred. No, no, no. With 500 points. Okay, and delete those. Plan B will be just us using one tree. That's fine as well. Hatch, click. Okay, that works. Okay, fine. So, hatch tree is going to be actually printed out as white hatch. So, print color is going to be white. And uh, print width, it doesn't matter. But I just want the the color inside here to be white. And now let's let's do some placing and scaling, right? So I will be just kind of putting these trees into correct positions, and I'll try to make sure that I'm using uh, using up both of the uh, both of the types of the tree, something like that. And then it goes here and gets scaled up a bit. And then we have um, this guy here. Maybe let's just be lazy and make two copies of it here. And this one is just a tiny bit smaller. Okay. That one single tree can be this. It can also be here, here here and here and then the willow tree uh, that's not a willow tree that's a birch tree I keep for some reason saying willow tree I don't know why it's definitely fatter here bigger like that and also it's it's kind of thinner here like that and a pretty big boy here. Actually, don't even need to scale. Yeah, that's it. That's that's uh, all we need to do. And now I will just right click on the outer layer, select objects, right click on the hatch tree layer, select objects. Me, uh, remember that um, these trees and the person is also in that layer. So I need to unselect these before I move them. Right, so I just call holding the, down the control key and select them, and I just move them and enter from let's say this corner point here to this corner point here. Right, so we have something like this going on. Let's go to our ground floor, no, uh, axle view, and let's see how it looks like. Looks like crap. Uh, let's see if we can fix it. What if Axo moves below? No, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Okay, so hatch tree needs to be inside of the Axo layer. Um, and I actually want the hatch tree uh, to be in front, right? The hatch is to be in front. So I will right click on it, select objects, and I will type in uh, send to front, no, bring, bring, bring to front. And usually it works, I don't know, uh, we'll see. Yeah, it does work. Okay, so now it, it got brought in front, in, in front of the lines, right? In, in front of the other lines. Whew. Okay, we are almost there. Let's see what we're missing. We have the trees, we have the contours, we have the names, uh, with which look really bad. Jesus Christ, they look bad. Okay, let's um, uh, 
scale 0 0.5 uh, 0.5 yeah maybe uh, what if we do this and then this this the thing this looks better right so let's uh, let's do that for every one uh, 0 0.5 so let's first scale everything, 0 0.5. I just can't show you a tutorial where, you know, some basic stuff is done poorly. That, that would be, I don't know, that, that, that would be bad. I, I don't think that's pedagogical. Okay. Back, back to here. So th this is fine. This is good enough. Uh, good enough of a stamp. Uh, it, it conveys information. Uh, AXO is fine. It's actually, there are things that I would definitely come back in and clean, but we don't want this tutorial to be five hours long. So I'm not going to do that. Section AA has the hatch, has the uh, markings for the heights, has the trees, has the person. Um, all of it works. Uh, maybe uh, actually I don't like how how the angle of this looks so I will just double click on the hatch no I won't I will select the hatch and type in hatch no I will not how do we change the hatch oh yeah to change the hatch we select the hatch we go to properties and here we have the like it, it, we, we have the icon of the hatch so we click on it and we can change the pattern rotation to like 45 degrees and the scale to one. Uh, so I want it denser and I want it at 45 degrees. We go back to section AA and now it looks much better. Um, yeah, I like how it looks like now. Uh, so it's just 45 degrees, it looks okay. Ground floor plan. Um, the text, of course, of course, the text, I forgot that um the text will need to be uh, will need to be added in the layout not in the model space that's fine that's easy to do ground floor uh, shift a no uh text shift a is a freaking blender shortcut don't worry about it uh, <laughs> don't know why 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 i'm doing it um Right click, change object layer, scale, um, like five times bigger. Yeah, around five times bigger. Rotate it to a nine, like somewhat of a correct angle. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, position it, copy from this point to this is it. This is it to this point here. Select both of these. Control C, uh, side plan. Control V, and now they exist in the side plan as well, just that uh, they are in the incorrect position, so we just do that, and uh, good enough, that. Trees need more love, but that's fine, side plan is okay. Uh, altitudes need to be specified, but uh, again, we don't have the time. That looks okay, that looks okay, looks okay. Okay, let's print it out. So to publish your, or to print out your uh, layouts, actually let me control S to quickly save the file. And uh, now to print it out, control P, or you can type in print in, in your command line, control P will uh, print out, you know, uh, we'll, we'll kind of start the printing tool uh, where you can have the destination. So you can either have an actual printer as a destination or you can have a PDF as a destination for printing it out, right? So if you're Adobe, P if you choose Adobe PDF or Microsoft Print to PDF or Rhino PDF, either one of these, it's going to print it out as it, it's going to save the file, basically a PDF file. So I just choose Adobe PDF because it seems like it works quite well. Rhino PDF also works quite well. I never use Microsoft Print to PDF, but I assume it's going to work just as fine. 
size A3, yes, landscape, yes, copies, one, vector output, not raster output. By now you know the difference between the vector and raster. Here we want it to be vector output because we want the resolution to be as high as possible and vector output is infinite resolution. Easy. Um, output color, print color. Not the display color, color, but rather print color. The one that you are describing with this rhombus shape, not with the rectangle shape. View and output scale. Uh, so this is, uh, I, I think this is important. Um, view and output scale tab will contain um, what are you plotting out, right? So here it just says site plan layout. That's because I'm in this current layout here, but I want to print out all of my layouts, right? As a single PDF. So I will say all layouts here, all layouts. Scale for the layouts needs to be one to one because you describe the scale inside of the layout itself by typing in one to uh, 200, right? But here it's one to one, right? One millimeter is 0 0.001 millimeters. Then we have margins and position, line types and line widths, visibility and so on, printer details, we don't, we don't care about those things. All we care about is that it prints out in the correct size with the correct colors and it prints out the correct pages that we want it to print out at the correct scale, right? So this is done. We click print. It will ask you where would you like to print uh, or where you, would you like to save. I'll just save it to my desktop. Hit save. For some reason, it takes a long time. Uh, not a long time, but uh, it should be instant, but <laughs> it likes to take its its time. Ta-da! A PDF, which you can then name and save into the, uh, uh, the, the hand and folder. So let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, how do I make this? I, I believe it's Control L, yes. Control L to make it big. Um, site plan 1 to 200, my name ADA20. This is how it looks like. Looks fine. Uh, it's okay. Then we have uh, ground for, uh, floor plan. Looks okay. Actually, it could be 1 to 100. I think 1 to 100 would fit if we tilted it, but that's fine. Uh, we don't have a north um, markup here, but that's. Uh, it is necessary, but you know, I assume you know how to draw a circle with a single line in it. Then we have a section. I actually like how it looked, uh, how it turned out. Uh, quite clean, quite nice. And then we have our oh my god, we have our axle, which is bad. So the lines of the trees are gone, right? Because the hatch is in front of them. I need to fix this. So I will close this and I will go to top view. I will, uh, I need to select the lines of the trees. So outer select objects and I will type in uh, bring, to, uh, bring to front, right? So they, they get brought to, to front. Um, it will mess up here, but that's fine. That's something that I'm willing to live with. Uh, again, Control P. All layouts one to one. I just hit print again. Um, actually, let me name it properly, right? The, the the way I want you to name it. A A D A ten. My last name. My first name. Last name goes comes in first, then then your first name, you know. So Kirdekis Gediminas. Not Gediminas Kirdekis. Last name, first name, save. Let's wait. How's the battery? The, yeah, the webcam is almost dead. Um, so we have it here. Let's just immediately jump to the final. Drawing, yeah, Axel is okay. I would cut away like 
you know, trim away those parts and kind of clean it up a little bit more with the trees, but this is passable. Uh, like below average, but still okay. Um, right, that, that's, that's it. Now let me show you real quick how to um, how to upload the stuff to the schools uh, to the schools computer um, and I need to just quickly do one thing because I'm connecting to the schools computer from my uh, computer. So on the schools computers, when you need to upload it, uh, when you run any kind of folder, on the left hand side you see you know those. Uh, uh, server folders. This is so dark. Wait. Server folders, right? So you go to temp, and we need to wait for 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 mine to kind of load load in. Temp, temp, unprotected. And here, let me just uh, create a new folder called AADA10 hand in hand in. Well, handed. There we go. ADA ten handed, right? Uh, let me kind of go back here. So temp unprotected AADA ten handed. Minimize that. Uh, where is my? There we go. ADA ten. My last name, my first name. Make sure that it's there, because. Uh, I constantly make mistakes with students who make bad file names and then I can't find them in the system and then they ask me why didn't they receive any credits and um, then we figure out that oh you just didn't put down your name right so last name first name copy that's it you have passed the course. Well, as long as you know that the PDF has the stuff that the PDF should have, but uh, those four drawings and that's it. So this is the end of this these tutorial series. Hope you enjoyed them, and I will see you around in the school. Bye.